so how many people uh, from you knows about how to write down the test cases anybody knows about how to write down the test cases no okay so firstly what we will do is uh, i think you uh, you all are familiar with an e-commerce website so e uh, what we are going to do today is uh, we will monitor one e-commerce website and for that how we can create the test cases from the scratch that uh, that we are going to do today so uh, firstly how we are creating the test cases see in manual testing test cases are the most important part uh, without test cases you can't perform the manual testing so so how you need to create the test cases there are some columns uh, on an excel sheet where you can you have to create some of the things uh, is this that there should be a test a test uh, a test case id then test scenario user story test data details steps ex, uh, expected result actual result and status so your test case will be look like this there will be a test case id test case scenario so test case id is something uh, which is a unique id to your each and every test case test case scenario is like what you are doing in the test case like if you if you are testing any application so that you will write your like Uh, it it is it is a kind of a description then you have a user story then in in user story we always write the requirement in a user's perspective like for example we here you can see uh, the requirement is for login page so how i have written the user story here is as a user i want to login with correct credential so this this story is written as a perspective of a user that's why it is called a user story then you have detail steps so detail steps uh, in this is and this in this particular column what we do is we write each and every steps from the start to end for performing this scenario then you have an expected result so whatever steps you are doing according to that you expect a result that you write here and when you are going to execute the test case that you have to write here in actual result then you have a status column so what comes in the status column is for example if your expected result is equal to actual result then your status is passed if your actual result and expected result are not equal so your status is fail and that is our bug in uh, manual testing when when you when we are doing manual test so in this way we need to create the test cases so what we will do is we will monitor one application so this is an e-commerce website where there are some products like mobile phone laptops fridge and other items for for this website for this e-commerce website we will create some test cases so how we will do is See when uh, when you uh, you have seen some of the applications like Amazon and uh, Flipkart, all these websites. Uh, first thing, what you do as a customer is you actually register yourself as a customer. Then from registration, after that you can log in. Then you can see the products. Then you can cart those products, and then you can uh, purchase those order. Like you can do the payment. so same process for that uh, these are called we uh, these uh, these all things we call as modules so for each module you have to create the test cases so i have already prepared some of the test cases so you can see here this is in the below these are your um, modules and for these modules you have these test cases like for login you have these test cases for accounts you have other test cases for products you have other test cases and for checkout page you have other test cases so for these we have to prepare the test cases firstly as you guys don't know how to create the uh, test cases so we will go with the smallest part today that how you need to create the test case for login page if you need to log in to any e-commerce website 
what we will do is first we will monitor the website so for login if you open the website you need to come to this section at the right corner when you click here it will take you to the sign up page so you need to pass your credentials and then you need to click on sign in is it clear guys till here any doubt anybody needs to ask anything okay so for this one we will create the uh, test cases what i am going to do i am just going to create it here uh, i am not just going to explain you from here i will just create it from here so first is we will write test case id then you have test case name okay you can take this uh, column also and if you want you can leave this also test case name then you have test case description then you have detail steps expected result okay one more thing i am taking here is one more column apart uh, after detail steps i am adding one more column which is test data so i'll explain you about the test data also then you have expected result and actual result then you have status and here you can add one more column as bug okay. so what we will do is uh, for for example these are your columns now i will write down the fir first thing which is test case id so test case id is a unique id to each and every test case so that you can write it in this way 01 then you have test case name because uh, we are testing on login page first login module first so how you will write down the test case is tc dash login dash 01 so what this what this particular thing mean is tc means test case module so you can write social media or registration any module name to uh, which you are test then you have description so first thing what you will test here is when you uh, um when you log uh, when you open this uh, uh, this particular e-commerce website first thing what you will do is you will test this particular icon which is the user login icon is working properly or not so what you will write here is this is your description so test testing to check or testing or verifying functionality of user login icon so what we are testing we are testing on this login icon when i open for example i am opening it again when i open the e-commerce website it directly land me to the home page but before uh, viewing any product or carting any product what first thing i will do is i will click on this user login button or icon it will land me to the login page so this is my steps so how i will write down the step here is with the url in the browser
Next is click on the user login icon. So this is my steps that first thing what I will do is I will pass this URL and I'll click on this icon. So I will get this page. So these are my two steps. For, for these two uh, steps, uh, we need to add some data. And that is our test data. So test data is a U input which we provide to complete these steps. So here for completing this step, what you are, what uh, data I am providing is, I am providing this URL. Then I can see the login page. So th this is the data I am going to provide. And one thing you will see whenever uh, someone, a tester creates the test cases. Here he writes optional. Why it is written optional? Because some places at some steps, data uh, test data is required and it, in some places test data is not required so for example uh, when i click on the user login icon there i don't need any data to be passed on i just need to click on the icon so here i don't need any data that's why it is optional then if i pass this url page should display So this is my expected result. I'm expecting uh, this result by passing the, these steps and this data. Now, because I'm expecting it, now if I'm going to execute the same thing, what I'll do is I'll just pass the URL. I've passed the URL on the browser and I click on that login uh, icon. So I get the login page. So this is my execution part. So I get the same actual result. So my status here will be pass. Any any doubt guys? Anything you guys need to ask about the steps? Uh, you said test data is optional. Yeah. Meaning uh, like uh, without the uh, test data, uh, how can you actually do the perform the test? Okay. Why I said optional? Because at some steps, like here, you can see there are two steps. That open the URL in the log uh, in the browser and click on the user login icon. I see it said optional. That means if it is required, if the data is required, then only you can pass, uh, write down here. If it is not, then you can leave this space. Because if I need to pass the URL, I need to open the URL in the browser, I need URL. So that I have passed here. But for example, I, here I have only one step that I need to click on the user login icon. So for clicking on the user login icon, I don't need any data because already a, log, a login uh, icon is present there. And I just need to click on that. I, I don't need to pass any data. That's why it is said option. If it is required, then only you can pass here. No, uh, say for example, say if you are, if you are on a payment gateway, mm -hmm. and then you are checking whether the uh, whether the payment gateway is working fine or not, whether the yeah. OP, OTP is coming yeah. right, right, then you need to enter those uh, credit credit card or debit card or yes. uh, banking details. So those are test data. Those are data, right? To you yes. have so uh, so those have to be entered or with those. Those are also optional. No, no, that you need to enter because whatever data you are passing there, because like, like see, same way, if I am if I am passing the URL, that is my data. And for clicking the button, I am not passing anything there. I am just clicking on the button. So that is not my data. So if the example you are saying for the payment gateway, so uh, if you get any OTP that you need to enter here in the, uh, in the test data, credit card details that you need to enter. So these are your data. Yes, that is what, so those are not optional. Those are mandatory, no, right? No. no, that is mandatory. That you need to enter here in the test data column. 
okay it's it's only optional when if it is not required like at at any step if the data is not required you can delete this place okay got it okay. anyone else anyone else need to uh, ask anything but so i will verify these how i will verify these is i will uh, check the um, input fields with incorrect credentials correct credentials and see what results i get firstly uh, i'll pass the valid data which is like for example here uh, my valid data is this idlan360 at the rate gmail.com and password so if i pass this these are my valid data it should accept the value if i pass no invalid data so it should not accept the value so that we will do first so i'm writing the second test case here in same way pc login 02 here you will test is testing check input fields with valid data so the steps which you have written here above these you need to write down here again and you need to add one more step which is enter valid data and fourth is click on login button so here for example my valid data is user name i am just passing i am assuming that this this is my valid data and my password is 123 this is my test data i expect a result that user should able to log in and if i get if if i pass these credentials here and i click on sign in and i log in so my actual result will be user is logged in and my status is pass now if i am i am writing the third one testing to check input fields with invalid data so all these four um uh, four steps will be same you need to add here and now we are adding the user name as for example 1 2 3 and my password equals to for example it is i have just um change the fields with the data so with this uh, i expect that user should not able to log in and my actual result should be if i pass incorrect value like pure same value i am passing here like 1 2 3 and a b c and i click on sign in a customer with email does not exist if i get the same like my expected and actual result are same so my status is pass 
Till here, guys, any doubt? Anything you need to ask? See, these are the scenarios. So, yeah, yeah, please go on. I have one question. Yeah. Yeah. So what? So uh, over here, there um in this there is a bug, right? The uh the username and password are they are not matching with the correct username and the correct password. So there is a bug. So one. So what do you have to write for the bug column? Uh okay. Uh here we don't have bug right now because my expected result and actual result are equal because I expect that user should not able to log in. And my actual result is same that user is not able to log in and he gets the error message. So these are same. But for example, oh. here, yeah, if, oh. yeah, I if, yeah. if I, so if the expected result and the actual result are not the same, okay, if if it is not equal, then you have a bug. Yeah, then I have a bug. So whatever actual result I get, so for example, this one. That with this user ID and password, I expect that user should able to log in, but user is not able to log in for example i get your bug user is not able to log in so th this is what you have written this is uh, you have written the actual result here you will change the status to fail and what we do in the bug i bug is uh, there are some applications like jira we have uh, bugzilla so uh, in that application, when we uh, write down our bug, there are bug IDs generated. So bug ID is same exact equals to the test case ID. It could be written in this way. Uh, I'm writing it as bug 01, for example. So what we get is when we uh, assign the bug or when we create the bug inside that application, Jira or any other uh, project management uh, tool, there we uh, create this bug. So there we get a generated bug ID that we can write here. Because what happened is when we use this project management tool, so with that uh, and we create some things uh, there like test cases or bugs, so we are going to assign those bugs to the developer. So already we have assigned the bugs uh, to the developer through the application as well as we are going to provide these uh, Excel sheets where I have written all the test cases. So he will get an ID that for, for this particular test case, this bug is created and it is also assigned me there in the Jira or in that application. Oh, that means uh, with uh, I mean, even in the Excel sheet, uh, even I mean, is these are for manual testing, right? Yes. So yes. Um, manual testing, uh, whatever test cases you write, it has to be, uh, it has to be complemented with Jira, uh, where yeah. you do run those uh, test cases and bug and stories and everything, all those things. I mean, yes. the sprint and issues and everything or it has to be complemented along with jira yes because yes. with uh, in jira only we can give the bug code right we yes, can give the yes. code for the bug yeah but uh, see we can create a bug uh, reports also we can create bug reports but it will be hectic because same way that uh, the test cases which we are creating here same way you have to create it create the bug report uh, you will get mm -hmm. same thing, bug, uh, bug ID, bug description, and all these things you need to follow. So, uh, I like uh, to um, manage that time and effort. What we can do is we can create all these things in the uh, platform, that application, and through there we get that ID that we can mention. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if we if we can write it only, if we can write it in Jira, all these test cases and everything, then is there any requirement for writing it in this Excel sheet? See, we don't because write everything you the, write in the Jira only. Yeah, we will not write each and every test cases in Jira because right now you, have, you can see only there are two test cases or three test cases in front of me. When you will work in a company, there you need to create hundreds of, uh, hundreds of test cases. So only those test cases you will mention mm. in uh, those applications, 
where you already find out the bug because we will first first thing what we will do as a manual tester is we create these test cases in excel so already we know that this particular test case or uh, the, uh, the module is not working or we get bug at this section so only this test case you will mention there in jira or in any other application like bugzilla okay from there we assign it to the dev because there are so many so many like uh, you have seen jira so jira has a long pro process to create test cases you need to follow some yes. steps so if we are going to yes. do all the steps like all the test cases if i am writing there in jira uh, with all those steps so it will take so much of time okay so only the ones which has some issues that is yes. bugs things like that only those will be written in jira yeah. to uh, to uh, yeah to solve those bugs right okay. yes yes uh okay so okay. yeah okay so anybody else needs to ask anything here so this one uh is for login if you are creating test case for uh, any other page same way you need to follow the process like this is for login i am just logging in uh, to the application so when i log in next thing where you land is the account section and in account section you can see the customer detail so in customer detail also you will follow the same process like i am just opening the uh, account page you can see all those for all those things which you see here like customer detail where is uh, the customer's email id uh, its a uh, name organization name it is then uh, customer name then address then want to change my email id this is the step and expected result will be email id update success message and customer say a uh, customers details are saved and actual result will be new details saved so both are same so your status is passed next is if i i tr try to log in with updated email id what we have done here is we have changed this email id and we are trying to log in with a new id which we have changed here so for that also we will follow the same there there are the steps which we follow then expected result will be there and actual result will be there so the format of writing test case is similar you have to follow these steps which i have shown you test case id test case name test test case description detail steps uh, test data expected result actual result and status and bug so these will be same uh, only you need to work according to the each and every section of the e-commerce website it depends it is a login page registration page accounts page uh any other page like payment product page so that you need to follow anybody guys anything you guys need to ask cuz i can see five people are there uh so i'm just giving you 2 minutes uh, guys just uh, see if you want to ask anything any questions you have anything which i can repeat so we don't have to give the name uh, like we don't have to explain what the bug is right in the bug column we just give the numbers for the each bug for the yeah. daily cases yeah you can uh, see when i say where we create bugs in jira they are already see our bug is that user is not able to log in uh, with these credentials and he gets this message so this is our bug and this will be our bug description as well so same way when as i told you that when we create the bugs in jira they are uh, they are the description which we write while creating the bug is the same description it is written here in the actual result. thank you so when, no problem so when a when a developer open the num, uh, open the bug id which is present here 
you will see the description of the bug that this description is uh, the bug has this description even you can add the screenshot of the bug that this bug uh, the, uh, at this point you get the bug that screenshot also uh, you can add here in jira mm -hmm. okay anyone else need to uh, ask anything you hey guys i'm just waiting for 2 minutes more uh, so that if you guys need to ask uh because test cases are the most important part in manual testing uh so without this thing you can't do the manual testing because you are not the one who is handling this manual uh these test cases uh like there are different people who can use your test cases it could be your project manager business analyst developers even your testing uh, like your in your testing team your different colleagues they can also use your test cases so it should be simple in writing like whatever you are writing it could be understandable to each and every other person who is reading the document anyone who needs to ask anything <laughs> 